Hey there, it's Kat, and this is Bruise and Reviews. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys about a readathon I'm participating in in January. So, throughout this entire month, even though we're like halfway through the month, I have been reading from this TBR, I just haven't had time to film and post this video. So, I have been taking part, my TBR is just really, really late. So the readathon I'm taking part in is the Past and Future readathon. It was created by Emily from Novel Novels and Gemma from Read a Book Gem. And I just really wanted to participate. I wanted to participate last year and I just didn't quite get to. And I was like, no, I'm going to do it. This is the only readathon I'm taking part in this January. And I'm, you know, I'm going to roll with it. We'll see what I'm going to read. So if you want to know more about the readathon, I'll leave the announcement videos in the description below. There's still time to join in. There are only eight prompts. So if you are super fast reader then you could probably still take part and read all of them. But the way that the readathon is structured are that there are prompts for the past and prompts for the future and you just read books. They can be of any genre so I feel like that really suited me and my mood reading time at the moment. So yeah, let's go through what I'm gonna read. So we'll start off with the prompts for the past and the first prompt for the past is to reread a favourite book. Now I don't want to be predictable but Anytime I get a prompt that says that I need to reread a book, I have been picking the same book because I haven't been rereading it, even though I'm like, I really need to reread that. So, um, it's Waylander by David Gemmell. I mean, how many TBRs have you seen this on lately? A lot, I would imagine. Uh, gonna finally read it though, because I, j I just really, really need to. <laughs> I really, really need to. So, this one. This one, of all the books on this list, has to be read by the end of January. And if it doesn't appear in my January wrap up, then please throw oranges at me. Okay, just spam the comments with orange emojis. That that works the same. It's help me with fruit. The next prompt is to read a book that's recommended by somebody older than you. So for this one, I'm going to be reading The Jennifer Morgue by Charles Strauss. And this is the second book in the Laundry Files, which the first book was The Atrocity Archives. And this one was recommended to me by my dad. It was also recommended to me by my friend Adam, who is older than me. Uh, but my dad has recently sped through the entire series of The Laundry Files and he's raved about them and I'm like, I, I should really read this one. It's also on my 2022 digital TBR, so, you know, two birds, one stone, let's read it. Prompt number three is to read a book by an author that you enjoyed but haven't read from it in a while. So I'm actually going to be doing a reread for this one and it's a reread so that I can continue with the series because I wanted to continue with the series, it just took ages for the second book to get to me. So I was like, mm, I need to reread the first one so that I don't feel like I've forgotten who all the characters are. So the book in question is Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Rowanhorse. I really enjoyed this book the first time I read it. Actually I thought the first half of it was quite slow and I was like, mm. and then the second half of it came along and hit me around the head with a wheelbarrow. So I really enjoyed it, to be honest. I, I really, really want to read the next one and I was like, I did, I did really enjoy this writing and I just want to take the plunge and go back into it and reread it. And also January is a good time for rereads because I feel like it's a nice way to sort of get into the swing of things for the year. So the last prompt for the past is to read a book set before you were born. And this is honestly the one that I struggled with the most because I don't really read that many books that are set in our world or set with definitive dates. I definitely don't pick up historical fiction that often. So I struggle to sort of pick something out. And then I sort of stumbled across one that is sort of alternate reality, but set in Tudor times. And I was like, I'm gonna roll with it because it's not really historical fiction, but it kind of is. And if it is, then it's set, you know, in like 1500s, you know, it's kind of cheating, but also kind of not. So we're gonna roll with it because I'm not gonna be too strict on myself. And I don't think the ladies that run this readathon would be too strict with me either. So here's hoping. So the book I'm gonna read for this prompt is Death Scent by Robin Jarvis. This is on my 2022 physical TBR. I know it looks like a chunk, but the writing is really big and the margins are quite big. So I feel like I could still make it through this and not be too bad. I'm not even sure if it's 500 pages long, even though it looks like it should be. So having looked at the back of this book to get the synopsis for it, I was totally wrong about what year this was set in because Elizabeth Tudor is celebrating her 178th year on the throne of Englandia. It's still before I was born, so we're going to count it and roll with it, okay? So now we're moving on to the prompts for the future and there are again four of these. So the first prompt for this is to read a book that you promised yourself you'd read. So for this one I'm going to be reading The Falling in Love Montage. This is a book I actually started in December and I was like, oh I'm going to read it, I'm going to read it before the end of the year and then I didn't because I'm rubbish at all the things. Who's surprised? No one. I am about 50 pages into this book and I just need to carry on with it and finish it. So I have to read it at some point. I promised myself that I will so it can count for this prompt. 
Prompt number two is to read a book featuring a profession that you wanted to do when you were younger. Now, I have wanted to be an author for a long time, so I didn't want to count that because I still want to be an author at some point in my life, hopefully, fingers crossed, you know, but you actually have to write a book to do that, but, uh, <laughs> you know, eventually. So aside from that, the other profession that I really wanted to do, and I'm chronically ill-suited for, even though I did used to pretend that I was good at it back in the day, was an actor. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I struggled to find a book with an actor in and then I happened to read Caraval at the end of last year and I was like, oh, there are people who are paid actors in Caraval. And I'm guessing that there will also be paid actors in Legendary, which is the sequel. So I was like, let's read Legendary because, you know, I just really hope that there are actors in it, otherwise I'm completely stumped. I mean, I'm sure there are books with actors in, many books, and they're mostly contemporary. I would, I would wager. But also, I'm just gonna read it and mood read, and if it doesn't quite fit the prompts then I, you know, shame on me, but <laughs> let's hope it does. So the next prompt is to read a feel-good book, and for that one I'm gonna read Supernaturally by Kirsten White. This is again on my 2022 physical TBR. I'm really aiming to sort of knock that challenge out of the park, and I really feel like this readathon can help me. The reason that this is a feel-good book for me is because I'm really hoping it will bring back the 2010s nostalgia of, of you know, paranormal books, because uh, the first book in this series did, and this is a continuation of that, so I feel like hopefully it will give me that same feel-good thing. And it's also feel-good because it's a small book, and, and we love small books, so, <laughs> you know. And the last prompt is to read a book featuring a protagonist that's older than you. Now I'm 29 now, so that rules out every single YA and NA book. So that significantly lowered my selection for this prompt, but I did realise that the main character of the Case Scarpetta series, Case Scarpetta herself, is, you know, like late 40s, I think. I, I think she's been in her late 40s for a very long time, and I don't think she ever changes age. So, you know, mystical Case Scarpetta with her unaging age is still older than me, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna read Point of Origin by Patricia Cornwell. I think this is book nine in this series and I just need to know what happens. Unfortunately I have had a major thing spoil for me about this book. Kind of my own fault to be honest because I was looking to see how many pages were in the book and on the last page there was a very obvious line about somebody who has died in the book and I'm like <laughs> I just spoiled that for myself. But it's okay because I accidentally got it spoiled in a review as well that I read for the book that wasn't marked as a spoiler, so I would have spoiled myself anyway. At least I can be angry at myself for accidentally doing it rather than this random person for just not tagging spoilers, which I am still mad about because like, come on, just tag your spoilers. Anyway, gonna read this book, hopefully I'm gonna enjoy it. So there we have it, those are the books I'm gonna read for the Past and Future Readathon. I just wanted something to sort of direct my reading a little bit. I know I'm doing a lot of things from my 2022 TBRs, but I also quite like that because I feel like it's gonna get me kick-started and feel like I'm accomplished and that's kind of what I'm hoping to do with this readathon. If you guys want to leave a comment and you don't know what to say, then please leave a comment just telling me to read Waylander because I need all the encouragement I can get because I'm a trash human being. And if you like this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!